It really is no secret to anyone anymore that I love movies. And out of all the movies I have here on my shelf, or all the movies that I've seen in my life, the two that flip-flop from being my favorite are either Baby Driver or Fight Club. Naturally, when you have a favorite movie, you wanted to see everything that the director, cast, or any of the other crew members have done. Baby Driver was directed by Edgar Wright, so naturally I own all of his movies. And Fight Club was directed by David Fincher, which I have three of his movies. And I know that makes me look like a fake David Fincher fan, but I've seen all of his films except for Panic Room, The Game, Alien 3, which I don't really know if that really counts. Um, from what I understand, it doesn't. And of course, his latest film, Mank, which is about the manking of Citizen Kane. So naturally, I'm very excited to see Mank, and unfortunately, I have never seen Citizen Kane, and which is where today's video comes in. One of my near and dear friends, Max, recently invited me to go with him to see Mank on the big screen, which is a very cool because it doesn't even come out on Netflix until next month. So I'm one of the first people who actually get to see it, which is pretty cool. But from what I understand, from what I have seen from the recent reviews or things that I've heard about Mank, is that it is a very immersive film and it doesn't really give you anything. So if you haven't seen Citizen Kane, it's basically saying, screw you. <laughs> so that is why today I'm going to be watching Citizen Kane, giving you my quick thoughts, going to see Mank, then giving you my quick thoughts on that, and then doing kind of a combined review on how I feel the uh, movies help or uh, don't help each other and which one I like better. It'll probably be Mank. To be honest with you, I don't know anything about Citizen Kane except that it is written by Herman Mankiewicz, which is what Mank is about. So yeah. <laughs> so with all of that said, I will be back right here in about two hours. I gotta pee. All right. So now I can say that I've seen Citizen Kane and I'm a little conflicted. So naturally a movie like this is going to have the praise behind it that you've heard probably your entire life and some of it I get and some of it I don't get. So let's start off with the things that I liked. So naturally all of the performances in this movie are phenomenal, uh, specifically Orson Welles who also directed the film and this is his first film ever which is just like I wish I could do that but I definitely will never be able to do that. <laughs> um, then you got Joseph Cotton, Ruth Warwick, Dorothy Comingore, Everett Solheim and uh, yeah. I didn't say any of those names right, but I can live with that. Second thing I really liked is the score done by Bernard Harmon, who really has never made a bad score in my opinion. And granted, I've only heard three of them, which is this, Taxi Driver, and Psycho. But all of them are very good as well. So like I said, I went into this not knowing a story, but what I thought it was is a movie about Hey everybody, it's me sitting in the editing chair about two days later because I gave a horrible synopsis when I tried to radio myself. So here is a computer doing a better job for me. Boop! When the reporter is assigned to decipher newspaper magnate Charles Foster gains dying words, his investigation gradually reveals the fascinating portrait of a complex man who rose from obscurity to staggering heights, though Gaines' friend and colleague Jeb Didier Leland and his mistress Susan Alexander shed fragments of light on Gaines' life. The reporter fears he may never penetrate the mystery of the elusive man's final word, Rosebud. When you have a movie like this, there's always the fear that it's not as good as everyone says it's going to be. And for me, it really wasn't. But that doesn't mean it's not a good movie. Um, another good thing that I liked about it was the pacing. For an older movie, they're, they tend to like focus in on certain things for way too long. And then things that I actually care about or everybody actually cares about, just they like, skip over. But this one, I felt like the pacing was really well executed, except for maybe the first 20 minutes where it just throws everything at you like very quickly. And it took me a while to figure out what was going on, what the story was going to be about. Um, but once I was in, I was in, and it stuck the landing all the way throughout. I would say that the second act is the best, the third act is second best, and the first act is the worst. I think on a rewatch, it would probably improve a little bit for me. Certain things in the film I felt very mixed about, and the big one in that is the cinematography, which granted, this movie is gorgeous. A lot of the things I didn't like came out of the lighting. There are multiple moments in the movie where you see shots where a certain character's face is completely black and it's just a silhouette, but they're having a conversation with somebody else. So the first time I saw that kind of a shot, I thought it was symbolism because the silhouette itself was Kane. Um, but then as the movie went on, a lot of shots that were similar to that were just on random people who weren't necessarily important to the story. So it kind of ended up feeling like they just 
had the lighting that was in the buildings that they were filming in and then they didn't have any other lighting options available so it just felt like kind of lazy but i i don't know if it was intentional be, but i i could be wrong i don't know that's how it felt for me the big negative i have with this movie is that a lot of times when we have these flashbacks it starts off with the interviewer uh, talking to someone who was in kane's life and it tells the story from their perspective, although it's not always from the perspective, it's just like word of mouth. So it, it was kind of like distracting to me in a sense, because it was like, so how did this person end up hearing about it? Because like, why would Kane tell them this information? And the biggest example of this is there's a scene where we're having a flashback being told to us by a certain character. And then we see Kane interacting with another character while the character telling the story is sleeping in the shot. So it's kind of like, how did you know this or like why would they tell you this this kind of information because you were asleep when it's not necessarily important to you um because they tell you what actually what happened once you woke up so why are we like focusing in on certain things that haven't happened or like you weren't around when it happened kind of a thing but yeah it's a good movie i would recommend it i know i'm talking a lot about the negatives but it's because when a movie is like praised to be this high everything is supposed to be good so the only things that really do stick out are the things that aren't very good um so overall i would give it a four out of five um and yeah about an hour from now, I'll be leaving to see Mank, and I'm very excited and kind of skeptical, to be honest with you. I'm skeptical because I feel like it's going to be praising Herman Mankiewicz, the writer of the film, a lot because it is entitled Mank. <laughs> I feel like I'm not going to be able to root for the character as much as I want to because I'm not necessarily on the same page as everybody else with the fact that I think this movie is a masterpiece. Um, so I'm wondering how I feel about it. But overall, I really hope it's good. <laughs> well, I've seen it. I've seen Mank, the new David Fincher film. It is currently 11 o'clock right now and I am completely drained, but I've seen it. And that's all that matters. But here's the question. Is it good? Should I see it? And the answer is yes, you should see it. Only if you've seen Citizen Kane and done your homework because holy crap, this movie really does not care if you have seen the movie or not. It really trusts you that you have seen the movie and have done a little bit of homework to get basically everything that they talk about during this movie. I went with two other people to see this movie. The first one has seen it five times and the second one has seen it zero times. And I fit right perfectly in the middle of that. From what I understand from the second person's point of view is that you do not need to see Citizen K to watch it, but from the person who's seen it five times point of view, it definitely, it definitely helps a lot if you have. But besides the point, Gary Oldman gives a phenomenal performance in this movie. Like, I cannot stress enough how good he is in this role. He completely disappears. He's a completely different person. You do not see Gary Oldman when you're watching this character. You see Herman Mankiewicz, or if you're like me, you see Brian Cranston and Jeff Daniels uh, mixed together. But what that doesn't matter. <laughs> Another great performance is Amanda Seyfried, who plays a woman who through the course of events, uh, meet Citizen, not Citizen Kane, <laughs> Herman Mankiewicz, and they form a little relationship. I don't know, want to say what kind of a relationship, but they form one, and it is interesting, and she oftentimes holds up to Gary Oldman and could arguably be better in certain scenes. And this film was actually written by David Fincher's father, who has passed away at some point, and he has no other credits to his name, so I don't know how good this is in the grand scheme of things, or if there is a grand scheme of things to go off of. But he wrote it and the writing is very strong. Hey everybody, I'm back because I can't form a sentence without messing up the words. Earlier in the video, I was wondering if I would be able to root for the character of Herman Mankiewicz, which sitting on it for about two days now, I can say that I was able to root for Herman Mankiewicz as a character because Gary Oldman's screen presence is that good, along with the writing done by Jack Fincher. Both Jack Fincher's dialogue and Gary Oldman's performance are very likable on the screen, and yeah, I have nothing to complain about in that regard. And then on top of that, the composers of this movie have also done Gone Girl and The Social Network, two other Fincher films. And if you like those scores, I guarantee you, you will like this score, because it is also phenomenal, like everything else in this movie. But Bryce, is the movie only phenomenal? No, it is not. <laughs>
Like I said countless times already, if you have not seen Citizen Kane at least five times and have done your homework, this movie will mean nothing to you, which it meant nothing to me. I appreciate it from a technical standpoint, from the cinematography, from the acting, from the writing, but from an emotional standpoint, I did not give a heck about anything that was going on. And that is completely okay. If anything, this movie made me want to do my homework and watch Citizen Kane again so I can fully appreciate this movie and all of its beauty. But as of right now, if I had to choose between Citizen Kane and Mank, I would easily choose Citizen Kane by a long shot, even though I'm going to give him the same score of a 4 out of 5. I cannot stress enough how good this movie is and how much I highly recommend you watch Citizen Kane and do your homework beforehand. But if you don't want to do your homework and don't want to watch Citizen Kane, which I don't personally know why you wouldn't want to do it, it still works as a movie. It doesn't work as a great movie, but it still works as a movie. So if you want to see the new David Fitcher flick, go see it. But if you don't, you're really not going to miss anything. If I had to give my quick rating for all the Fincher films that I have seen, I would put this right near the middle for a quality standpoint. And as far as a rewatchable standpoint, I put it near the bottom. But that is an attest to all the other films that he's made that I truly do enjoy and love along with the fact that, like I said countless times already, that I do need to rewatch Citizen Kane five more times <laughs> to be able to fully appreciate this movie and get it bumping up that list, which I'm sure it will be bumped up that list at some point. But yeah, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and let me know if you want to see more film-like things. I think you'll see them regardless, though, because I do have a lot of ideas. Not a lot, I have like three. But I do have the ideas. With all that said, watch Fight Club, then watch the Gone Girl, then watch Zodiac, then watch Citizen Kane, 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 then do your homework, then watch Mank. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.